Oh, okay. yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, you're recording. Okay. okay. Are we yeah. gonna, gonna have a nice memory about this? So we're great. What about you? Uh, well, I have to say, of course, everybody is wearing uh, masks and uh, I've just taken mine off. Uh, my wife is sick and I've been sick for the last week. So uh, I'm sorry if you see big bags under my eyes, uh, then you know why. OK, so I try to give you a happy smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> so keep smiling. OK, guys, well, I'm here. But of course, we're missing one one person, aren't we? We're missing somebody very special. Who could that possibly be? Agatha, Agatha, Agatha. <laughs> Auntie Agatha, yes. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> now we need Maggie. So if we look up, look up, look down, 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 look around, look around, Maggie can't be found. Guys, look with me. Look up, up, up. Let me see. Look up, look up, look up. Look down, down, down. Look around, look around. Maggie can't be found. No, I'm here. Wait a minute. Is she? Oh, is she here in my bag? Yeah. Let me open the bag. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, look. I found. Ha ha. I found a leg. Wait a minute. Two legs and uh, woo, a tail. Who's this? <laughs> yeah. Hi. It's me, Maggie. <laughs> Yay. So hello, hello, guys. Hey, Steve! Yes, Maggie? Let's sing a song! A song? Maggie always wants to sing a song. Yay, come on! So guys, are you ready? Here we go. Goes like this. Now listen up. Ready? Okay. Go stand, stand up. up. Stand up. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, so stand up, stand up, stand up. Yeah, let me see. Even at the back. Yes, I'm watching. I can see. The internet is everywhere. Okay, so stand up, stand up. Yay! So, come on, let's walk. Can you walk with me? Yeah. Come on, let's walk. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's walk. I'm watching, I'm watching. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's walk, 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 walk. Let's walk, walk, walk. Oh, yeah. Let's walk, walk. Walk, walk, but be careful now and stop. Stop. Come on, let's jump, 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 jump. Come on, let's jump. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's jump, jump, jump. Do little jumps, little jumps, just little jumps. Now big jumps, big jumps. Yeah. And now little jumps again. And one big jump. Yeah. Be careful now and stop. <laughs> Come on, let's run, run. You go run, run, run. run, run. Come on, let's run. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's run, run, run. Run, run, run. Come on, let's Whoa. run. Whoa. Yeah. Let's run, run, run. Run around. Let's run, run, run. Run, run, run. run, run, run. Oh, yeah. Let's run, run. run. Run, run, but be careful now and stop. Come on, let's dance, 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 dance. Yeah! Let's dance so Woo! Do the funky chicken. Come on, let's dance, 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 dance. Do the funky monkey. Come on, let's dance so yeah. Do the crazy octopus. Dance. Yeah! Seven like the red disco. Yeah! But be careful now and stop. Stop. Stop and sit down. Yeah. Woo! There we go. As stop nice. and sit down. Yay. So I thought we could just start get a bit of energy going as, as usual. But uh, how's everything going? Well, we have had wonderful three days. Well, have we had wonderful three days? Can you hear? Can you hear them? Can you hear them? Yeah, just about, just about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's go. Have, we, have we had a wonderful three days? Three, two, one. <laughs> it's always difficult to get teachers motivated. They just want to sit and drink coffee and just listen. And yeah, yeah okay, yeah. <laughs> me too. Me too. Um, so, um, Steve. We are very grateful that you're here with us. And this event that we are having is, current, is about motivating 
young teachers yes. getting them into action. And I have, I know you are very limited with your time, so we really I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, I need to be really back in the studio again. And the next idea for uh, for our YouTube channel and uh, for, of course, a lot of material that the teachers can use to to bring into the course. So you're not just restricted to have the same thing again and again. There can be something different that you can bring in and give the lesson and and, and a little bit of a, a lift for you, even if you've been doing it many times before. Well, you know, one thing uh, it's un undoubtable is that you are a creative person. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about creativity today and we showed your materials to the students. And I was like, I'm, I'm thinking for myself, where do you get the motivation, the, the creativity, the ideas from? What are you using? What do you take? <laughs> well, uh, I, I moved to the Czech Republic for the Sviani and the pills and beer, uh, but I don't think it's, it's not all from there. So I, I don't advise that. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I would say that um, it just comes from sort of playing with an idea. So usually what happens is I might come up with a little bit of an idea and think, oh, this could be funny. And then we look at things that we can put around that to teach so that then we can extend it into a full story or a full clip. Um, but of course, I don't work alone, so it's always good to have somebody to bounce ideas off. And many of the ideas could be either a bit too crazy and we can't use them in that way. There's some things that may be a bit boring we try to come back to. So it's an ongoing process. It's something, and I think as teachers, you're always kind of thinking about how you can change something, how you can, manipulate something to get especially the people sitting at the back you know you're always trying to teach the the kid at the back you can have a fantastic lesson everything will be wonderful but that one kid sitting at the back that couldn't be bothered he was the one that is in your mind at the end and you go nah it didn't quite work ah it wasn't great because you're always trying to tweak to think how can you you know how can you change something to get everybody involved you know so it's always thinking about how you can change something, how you can tweak it, how you can make it uh, a little more interesting. So when you give the guys a tip, like for example, they want a lesson plan, they want to plan a lesson, what would you, what would you say? Well, it, it's, it came from one of your questions that you asked uh, if there's anything I wish I had known at the very beginning when I started teaching. And I think one of the things that I, I really came to appreciate uh, after you know, time and experience and then when we were creating materials for teachers. And I think, I hope that everybody can see these books are written by teachers for teachers. But to come down to what I would say, the one thing I, I wish I'd put in at the beginning is when I structure every lesson plan, and you can see this in the books, I always try, we, what we always try to do is think about the energy levels of the class. So, you, cut, you, you start lesson planning, you think, okay, what activities am I going to do? Oh, that's a great one, I'll do that. Oh, that's a great one, I'll do that. But if you have two high energy um, uh, activities next to each other, you're in danger of really just overstimulating the children where they then start just to go crazy because they've, you've wound them up. So you need to think, okay, should my next activity needs to be a bit calmer and I need to settle them down. So think about the flow of energy in the lesson. If there's too much sitting and there's too much just, you know, focusing and listening, they get bored and frustrated and they want to move. If you move them too much, they become overstimulated. And then of course, it's difficult for you to control the class. So I would say one of the, the big tips about lesson planning is think of the energy levels. You'll see that in our teacher's guide um, that we've put what, what actually happens in each level. What are you trying to do? And usually a TPR stage has some energy because you want them to physically move. So the next activity could then be book work, which is just like bring them back down again. So try to juggle that. Obviously with the very small children, you're planning energy levels to be like this, to be up, down, up, down, up, down. Get up, move, sit down, get up, sit down and have it like that. Of course, as the children get older, you can start to smooth that out a little bit, but think about the flow of energy, not just the tasks that you're going to do. I hope that helps. Yes, yes, yes. Another question that might be, uh, uh, I think an easy one for you to answer, but still, uh, what is your advice to the young teachers at the beginning of their teaching experience, yeah? 
Yeah, I would say, um, of course, you come to you come to it with lots and lots of energy, uh, which is great. But remember, you're in the teaching for a long term. So try to manage that and don't burn yourself out uh, too quickly. Um, it can be a problem with lots of new teachers. They arrive with so much energy, with so much enthusiasm, and they give everything within the first year, within the first like four, five, six years. And then after that, then ugh, they find themselves burning out a little bit. It's one of the things, again, that we tried to sort of like in, encompass in the books. There are lots, if I take um, how we actually introduce the language, either like we slow reveal the cards, there's many techniques to introduce the language. We don't put them all at the beginning. And often the teachers might do that. They might say, oh, this technique isn't working, so I need to change it for a new one. So then they use that next idea, but then you don't have a fresh idea for later. So stage it. And that's what the books are good at doing as well with the lesson plans is we say in the first month, you can use this way of introducing uh, a flashcard. In the next month, you can use that one and a new idea. And you have something new for the whole uh, school term for the whole year. So don't throw all your best ideas, all your best activities at the very beginning. You might wow and excite the class, but then you'll find it more and more difficult later on. It's difficult for you to, to think, okay, I will, this is a fantastic idea and I want to use it now. Keep it for the, when the time is right, when you can use it a little later. Brilliant. Um... You are a teacher not only by heart, by soul, but also by training, right? Yeah, so I had, um, yeah, it's uh, a long history really, but uh, a lot of my training was done on the job as well. There's ongoing training courses, but uh, as originally started as a language tutor specifically for children learning English as a foreign language, and then um, studied in, in London, um, uh, in central London, continued uh, training in Tokyo. And I think I continue training now. Every time you talk to other teachers, you get ideas, you get uh, suggestions that work. Uh, so I think you're always learning. And that's probably advice for a new teacher as well. Stay open to new ideas and try things because sometimes you try an activity, maybe it doesn't work the first time. So you say, okay, I will throw that away and never use it again. Don't, stick with it. Perhaps the next time you introduce it, it will be a bit better. And the next time and the next time. So I think uh, teachers are always learning just like the students and they're learning how to deal with the class, learning how to manage the class, learning what different techniques are available, uh, what new theories are coming up. So I think uh, I think all of us are, are still training, still learning and it won't stop. <laughs> Uh, that's that's quite an interesting one in that uh, my mum was a uh, teacher um, she started with small children and then moved to um, some adult education later and I saw that uh, I saw how much energy she, she gave to all the classes and I saw you know her experience of interacting with people and uh, she gave me some very good advice which was never become a teacher and of course, you know, when you're uh, a little older, you say, no, I'm not going to listen to my parents. I'm going to do something else. Um, so I didn't listen to my mom and I did become a teacher. She was happy, but she said, yes, it's a profession where the more you give, the more will be taken. So you need to be careful. And I think that comes down to what I said that, you know, bring your excitement, bring your enthusiasm, but don't, uh, don't burn yourself out too early. Uh, because I know, as we said, you are limited with your time. I've got the last question for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it's going to be, in your opinion, what should education in the 21st century look like? And what is the teacher's role in it? So what is the role of this young? I, I think that's, that's going to be a very, very interesting question. And I think, uh, I think education is going to be pushed perhaps in more sort of like technology, especially with COVID. We've said that we have to be more online. But I think there's a very big danger there. And the very big danger is we mustn't forget that the, the essential, the number one, the absolute 
uh, you know, most useful resource in the classroom is the teacher. It's you. You will not be replaced by technology. If you are, the standards, I think, will decrease. Technology is there to be a tool for the teacher, but nothing can replace the teacher. And one problem we sometimes have on teacher training is with our DVDs, you, the teachers might think, oh, great, this DVD can replace me. It is not true, and it certainly shouldn't be used that way. You can show the DVD, but you need to be involved. You need to show that you are interested and you are playing along with the DVD. If not, you are giving the message and you are always giving the message to the children. They are mirrors for you. If you're not interested, if you think, okay, this, this video can replace me for five minutes and I can stop, stop being involved, then the children will stop being involved. So I think as more technology comes in, yes, it's exciting. Yes, we can use it, but the teacher is always number one. So I, I hope we never forget that. And I hope you guys never forget that. So I think that's probably the, the biggest thing that I can say. Yes, get excited about technology, bring some things into the classroom, amazing ways to be interactive, but interactive also means that there is a personal connection and that you are central to the class's development, to each individual's development. I have to start with something to ask. Well, I would have thousands of questions, but I really, really uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting in touch with us. No uh, problem, I, thank you. Uh, whenever I go and wherever I go, there are certain idols, teaching idols that I have. Uh, it's you, it's Richard Graham and other people. <laughs> that are doing wonderful job. So thank you for inspiring me, inspiring others, and I uh, wish you, and everybody wishes you a lot of health. Uh, thank you very much, thank love, you. Love and take care, Stevie. All the best. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank, Bye -bye. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's a naughty, naughty bird. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye. 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 <laughs> So <laughs>